So you know how you guys wanted me to fix that modem? Well, I'm here to tell you, I may have succeeded. Roll the intro. And here it is. So, the first thing you may notice is that what happened to the power cord? Well, uh, what happened to the power cord actually was technically my fault, but also at the same time not. Um, this had obviously broken before. I can tell because of the way it was repaired. Uh, and the person soldered this uh, connector back on and filled the inside with this hard set brittle plastic that just crumbles. That was the stuff that was crumbling apart. Uh, well, it eventually fell off from that. And so that connector is pretty much gummed up with hard, brittle plastic. Uh, it's just completely set in there. I can't actually pull it out. So the wire fell off, and what happened is I just soldered it uh, directly onto the board. There's three wires there. Um, so, um, first of all, uh, this is the third recording of this, of my attempts to fix this after the first video. Uh, and actually I succeeded and there will be some snippets of clips in here from when I recorded in that process, uh, when I steadily uncovered what was going wrong with this. Warning, warning, very nerdy talk incoming. So if you want to skip straight to the demonstration, please go to this timestamp and see it in action. If you want to hear how I fixed it and what the problem was, then stick around. You, you might learn something. I think that was really, really awkward. So I started out by asking myself, okay, is this a configuration issue? Do I have something set up wrong on the terminal? Do I have something set wrong up on the phone line simulator? Do I have a uh, setting wrong here? Am I not, uh, do I not have the registers set to the correct thing? Uh, is the other modem compatible with it? Et cetera, et cetera. And no matter what combinations of those things I tried, it didn't work and always failed the same way. And just to recap, the way uh, this thing was not working um, was that it was able to connect one way, I can't remember which way, if this dialed out or if I dialed to this, one of the ways it connect, but um, the only data was the data being sent from the modem, and it couldn't hear anything coming into it. This is very complicated. Basically, the output of that, which is why I think I drew that there, RX in, I have that labeled, goes all the way over here. Wait, no, that's the wrong line. I'm following the wrong line. Where does that come from? 100 hertz. That must be the si that must be the frequency generation. L I M out lim out. I think that's what that says. And I have that says uh, labeled as output. Because I don't, that's like the only thing that makes sense where this goes. TXF bypass, RXF bypass. Don't know what that is. R108. Of course, the labeling is different in my schematic. Oh, and here, here is a test point. Conveniently labeled test point two. Oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> okay, um, well that doesn't look quite right. That looks like it's clipping. Huh. recorded this, but very strange waveform coming out of test point five. Oh, oh there we go, that's pin six. 
What is it in the reverse? 125k. Test point four. Looking very strange. Why? Why do all the waveforms look like they're drunk? <laughs> There's had mid-level stuff going on there. I don't know what that's about. That would indicate a problem in my perspective. And then the output of that op amp is definitely pretty. <laughs> Not much else I can say about it. Oh, my camera's crooked too. Is this just nothing? Okay. Turn up, I guess. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, can we actually even see? Nine is to divide by three. And it's dividing by three. Output eight also is divided by three, but of a different. I'm getting 99 X. The uh, what was this? I think it was uh, add out a uh, bit four out address four out went high. So obviously it clocked in data, and then after that was done, it held it. It latched it up so that's a good sign the uh, data and write disable and reset and the outputs appeared working but I didn't test all of them and I may need to test it with more uh, waveforms and try all the um, try all the outputs all the combinations yeah uh, inverted Q output is tied to the data so it's a frequency divider by two uh, so it's one of those but uh I was suspicious of this chip because it looked like the outputs were trying to move but they weren't able to so I took it out of circuit just to see if it was the chip that was weak or if it was actually being held low in circuit. I don't know what that is but it is going negative. Because <laughs> there's the input and this output is pulsating like at one volt, uh, two volts peak to peak, I guess, but going negative. What in the world? There's nothing else that was branded HCF like that one was. There was nothing else in circuit that was made by the same company, whatever that is. All the other chips are different types, so maybe it was a failure in this one chip. So here it is, test. Oop, test and it fails every single one except the last one so just confirming my um, my diagnosis in the breadboard so but uh, this is the first lo dead logic chip probably the first of many goodbye all right <laughs> yes if you watch to the end sometimes you get bonus content like that this smart modem so we should see ring over here I swear Okay, so apparently there's a bit still that's busted with it. Okay, it was literally just working. Let me check that inverter gate. Did it go bad? Connect. Okay, connected at a lower speed though. Again, with the connecting at lower speed. Man, it, it just connected the right way. And then I started recording and now it's not working. Huh. Okay, slightly frustrating. Do I have both set up the right way? Okay, it still connects at a lower speed, so something's still broken. Well, it worked for a little bit and then it died. That's not really a good sign. Ah, oh, man. Well, that was futile, I guess. So, I started by taking stock of the chips. I said, okay, since I'm able to give it commands, that must mean that the CPU is working pretty well, probably fully. 
it must mean that the ROM is working to decode those commands and give me back the language like OK, Error, Connect. It's all stored here in the 4K ROM. I also dumped that ROM in my Flash programmer, and it turned out fine. Link to the dump is on my website. Also, the latch in between them that communicates on a multiplex bus must also be okay because they're talking to each other, and I can obviously probe and see the data, and I did. Um, so the next thing was that this DAC, which is the digital to analog converter right here, uh, which takes the digital signals from the CPU, converts them to analog currents, and then amplifies them with the op amps, must also be good. And that's basically the transmit system, just right there. That's how simple it is. This board right here, the secondary one, is the demodulation circuitry. And oh boy, is it complex. So we can get into that. But I tested the op amps. I tested, uh, this is an expander compander frequency, basically like a bandpass filter. It only allows the modem to listen to certain frequencies that it wants to hear and filters out other things. Ideally, I can get to that as well. Um, there's like latches and RS-232 uh, drivers and and all sorts of stuff, multiplexers, and there's something to drive the LEDs, but um, beyond that, this, this op amp right here actually is driving the speaker, so that's the audio output to the speaker. Um, but all those things tested fine, actually. Um, the op amps were clipping a little bit on their outputs, but I assume that's normal because it works. <laughs> um, so, uh, let me back up a little bit. So I have version 2, or sorry, no, I have version 1 of this uh, product. So this is the 1982 version, and there was a revision of version 2, I think it was 1983, came out the next year, where basically they took all of the discrete components and logic ICs on this board and condensed them down into one custom demodulation chip and plopped it on the first board, and so there's a one board variation of this thing, I believe. Uh, because that's what I have here in the schematics. I was not able to find schematics of this version, so I did my best to reverse engineer it, and I kind of have an idea of how it works. It's basically the same as this, where it, it counts the phase shift in the bits and then sends it out serially to the CPU in this complex counter network. Someone can simulate that if they want. Uh, but it, it's a nightmare. There, There is just so much stuff here. And the other thing is that all of the logic ICs on the board that are not the op amps, everything else, are the CMOS types. They're the CD4000. They're not actually CD. Those are Texas instruments. Some of them are. They're, they're just a hodgepodge of all different brands. I mean, there must be at least seven different branded chips on this board. Um, so... Um, one thing I did notice quite early on was that when I was probing on this board, just I was probing around, seeing if every chip was getting power and ground, which they were, I was noticing that there were not a lot of signals on this board. Uh, the interconnect between them had some signals, but most of those were just signals directly from the CPU. There was nothing coming back off this board. Um, so... What I did, and this was a very complicated thing. Oh, and by the way, the other thing I did was check power, ground, uh, capacitor value, shorted tantalums. Um, I went and painstakingly mapped out every single trace on this board and verified that every single thing had continuity and none of the pins were broken, none of the traces were broken, that the board interconnect was good. So a lot of stuff. This, this was months of work every single day on and off, basically. Uh, and I didn't have much time to work on this every single day, but I'm fi I'm so glad that I finally found the problem. It was, it was staring me in the face. So what I did was that I hooked it up in that setup where I could only uh, receive, or sorry, only transmit one way. I uh, couldn't receive anything, uh, but I set it up in such a way with the terminal that both terminals were actually typing and sending stuff to each other. So I was able to follow the receive signal in to see where it got lost. Uh, so I saw it on the op amps and it, it changed every second because I sent data every second so I could actually physically see the, um, the uh, what is it, the phase modulation uh, every second. Uh, this was on 300 baud, by the way. It would not connect at a higher speed. Um, I could see it happening. Uh, every single IC on this board tested good. I moved up onto this board. Uh, this was a counter. It tested good. 
This was a flip-flop, and the set pin was held high. Or maybe it was the Q pin, or, or something. Something was high all the time. And I was like, okay, maybe that's all right. And then I checked the other side of it, and it's a clocked flip-flop. I don't remember what type. This was all, like, weeks ago. Um, and so it wasn't getting clock uh, for the flip-flop on the other side. And it was in use. I saw that it was being used. It had a clock going to it, but there was no clock. I was like, okay, that's kind of strange. Maybe it gets clock later, but typically these things have their clock all the time. So I follow the clock over, and the clock is coming from this counter right here. One of the outputs of the counter, maybe it was like output five of the counter. That was where the clock was coming from. There was nothing on that output. Okay, so why is there nothing on the output? It's because the counter actually wasn't counting. Why was the counter not counting? Because the counter wasn't getting the clock. So I looked at the clock for that counter. And lo and behold, there were several clocks here all tied together. And they were all going to this inverter. And I was like, okay, why is the inverter low? It's because the inverter was actually not inverting. The uh, there First of all, actually, there wasn't a clock coming through the inverter. Um, but it was uh, low at the uh, input so it should have inverted high at the output except the output was also low and so i checked it and sure enough it's in my uh, bad parts bin now i think yes this guy right here early cmos inverter i heard these are typically prone to failure hcf 4069 unbuffered ube don't know the logo there uh 333y singapore made in singapore on the back, there's something else there. P69U69 for the inverter. Nice, right? Uh, so that was that was uh, dead. And actually, five out of the six gates on this inverter were all broken, which was kind of weirdly concerning. How do five out of six gates break on this inverter? Uh, something I just noticed, actually, right when I was about to record this video. Um, this inverter goes here, by the way. If you fold this thing over, the inverter does sit right on top of the transformer like this, uh, the way it just folds over, and it does get, or sorry, no, it actually sits right on top of these uh, capacitors right here. This sits on top of the transformer. Uh, it sits right on top of these capacitors here, and these capacitors are right next to the bridge rectifier and the power regulator. This entire section here just gets so hot. It's hot to touch when it's on. So this thing was probably just sitting on top of there and just roasted. That's my guess of what happened. Um, but I, I've heard these uh, early CMOS types are unreliable. So five out of six gates on that thing were busted. So I replaced it with another CD4069 uh, in a socket. You may be wondering why this chip is also in a socket. It's because I accidentally desoldered the wrong thing. Rookie mistake happens to every, everyone. So I accidentally took out this chip when I meant to take out that one. But I tested it in a breadboard and it was fine. It's, it's another counter. There's like seven counters on this board. Uh, they're all fine. Uh, so it was the inverter that died. So I, uh, I replaced it. Crossed my fingers. Hope for no smoke. Uh, good stuff like that. Um, and the problem slightly improved. Um, but I puzzled for this. I puzzled over this for many hours. It actually turned out at this point to be my configuration I was using. Uh, I was using a more modern modem that wasn't compatible with Bell modulation. So not only is there 1,200 baud and 1,200 bits per second, but you have to have the correct modulation um, mode basically. There were several different competitors at the time and each one used different originate and answer and modulation tones so that they all basically work with the same encoding but they were in different frequency ranges on the spectrum and so it was it was like sending out 2000 hertz when it needed to have 2200 or something or maybe it was the other way around basically. So I brought it to an older modem that I could set up uh, the Bell communication standard um, and lo and behold, it works pretty well. Like, I, I'm not complaining. This thing, from being completely dead to going to working basically fully, I'm not complaining at this point. Sometimes uh, it loses connection um, when you're trying to send a ton of data simultaneously both ways at once. Uh, so when you're in the high speed, uh, sending two files, uh, one transmit, one receive at the same time. Uh, sometimes it fails, but that could just be the setup I have, honestly. Um, the computers themselves may not be up to doing that. 
uh, because one of the one of them loses connection, the other one's fine. So anyway, uh, basically that's about it. It was one inverter, and then basically I had to change some things with it. But uh, other than that, it's now fully working. Now there is one problem, and that is when I put these sockets on. Uh, this thing doesn't actually go back in the case anymore. It doesn't fit, which is another reason why I'm putting it up on the shelf to be used like as a as a basically a display item. Uh, but it does work. So I may use this um, for um, maybe a computer if I can fit it in a case or maybe I'll remove the sockets and solder the chips directly on the board again. I don't know what I'll do. It'll be in the future, though, basically. But it's fixed, basically. Um, the other thing that's kind of... Uh, inconvenient is the power connector being the way it is but again couldn't do anything about that either so what would a video um demonstrating this repair uh what would it be without uh, of course demonstrating it in action so i will go over to the computer and get it set up and we'll be able to see uh both the uh, 300 baud speed and the high speed mode of this modem and maybe we'll even get it to talk to the older modem that i just restored so see you there Hopefully, hopefully this is set up in such a way that it's not actually, I think I got it perfect. It's actually not messing with the refresh rate of the monitor at all. I think any other way and it will start to, yeah, okay, well, look at that, wow, captures it perfectly. Nice, I don't even have to use a program to make them stay in sync. Alright, I'm going to start Telex and then this is all going to mess up because DOS runs in 75 hertz. You're gonna have to put up with a little bit of flicker. So let me let me let me go over the setup here. The smart modem, even though it's on this side, is actually connected to that computer right there, which is running Windows 98, but in a DOS shell. And the program I'm using is Telex. So modem is active. Lights came on the front. I will move the camera around so you can see. So lights came on. I'll now set up a call. Um, so let's go ahead and um, show you the lower speed first. So I'm going to go to configuration, com, com parameters, uh, and change the speed down on both of these just to make sure it's compatible. And I will go ahead and uh, first show you AT, it says OK. ATI0, self test, it says 123, which I'm assuming is a normal command. Let me actually bring this over here so you can see. Uh, 123 and OK. Uh, and then I type ATI4, and it says 141 and OK. So if your smart modem does that, then I guess it's working. Uh, or mine could just be special or something. So that's what my normal thing looks like. At least it says OK. If there was a problem, it would say error because on earlier versions of this modem when you did those commands it actually executes a ROM self-test so I guess those are normal checksums um, anyway so let's go ahead and dial out AT dial I'm just gonna dial six it doesn't matter what number I dial it's a phone line simulator it's gonna connect over to the DOS PC internal modem here it's ringing let's see if it will connect so I'm dialing from the smart modem. Okay, we got a beep. And we are connected. I uh, have the telephone now on mute, uh, but you can hear the tones, um, answer and originate tones, uh, both connected at 300. This is the lower speed. And the uh, high speed light, if you can see it, is not on in the modem. Let me actually bring it up a little bit. So maybe that's a better angle. So the high speed light is not on. So I can go ahead and type over here. You can hear the modulation. And it appears over there. And typing over here, there's the lower tone. And it appears over on that one. So I can clear the screen over there. And over here as well, a bit slower because of the key repeat on this computer is a bit slower. Um, so it works that way. Now let's hang up here. I broke out by using the escape sequence and I'm going to tell the modem, the smart modem to hang up. And it does. That works perfectly. 
And now let's dial to the modem. Now I have one dip switch setting already enabled, which is the auto answer. So it rings and now it should auto answer. It does. And it connects. Very fast on that one, actually. So same two tones. Now this one has the lower tone, which I believe is the originate. And the higher one, I think, is the answer tone. But it uh, works perfectly. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's go ahead and see that high speed. 1,200 bits per second, which is four times faster than this. And let's, let's, get, let's get a scale sense of how slow this actually is. I'm going to go ahead and send a file. Uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the um, readme, I think. Let's see here. Do I even have it? I don't think I do. I'm going to send scandisk.log over to this computer. And so you can get a, a sense of how slow. So the smart modem is the thing receiving this now because uh, it's on this computer and so that's about how slow it is 300 baud so it's about what you saw with the other modem that I demonstrated and I can go ahead and try and send a file at the same time uh, let's go ahead and send uh, oh there's the readme let's go ahead and send that over send it from the smart modem so now it's sending over to this computer it's, it's, this is what I mean by telex lagging, see? The data's coming through uniformly, it's just lagging. So, uh... And now it's lagging on that computer as well, so both of them. So, this is probably a telex issue, not the fact that my modem is, um, broken. Because, look at transmit and receive. And they're lighting up. And one of them just quit, actually, that was that tone. Uh, never mind. They're actually both still going. Oh, no, one of them stopped. That computer over there stopped. This computer's still going. So, that's about the speed, and that's the issue with this. I think it's just a telex thing, so nothing to worry about, pretty much. Um, yep. Looks good. Looks very nice. Um, so let's go ahead and abort this and hang up. And now to get the higher speed, all you have to do, ignore that, all you have to do is just take your um, serial port and uh, connect to the smart modem with a higher speed serial port, which will automatically detect as being capable of higher speed. So if I still type the same AT, I get the same OK. Self-test at the higher speed, notice it's faster. The printout is faster. So let's go ahead and dial from the modem to the computer at a higher speed. Notice that the high speed light is on. Got it right there. And I got an answer over here. Answer. Okay. All right, and we still got a connect. Now I believe that's supposed to say connect 1200. Uh, for some reason it doesn't. Over here on this computer's modem, we got connect 1200. But at any rate, both sides are connected at the high speed because the high speed light is on. And if I type um, over here, there you go, data appears over there. And if I type over here, data appears over there. So same thing. Now I'm gonna send that exact same file again and we'll see how much faster it is. So send file ASCII. Send scan this dot log. Very simple file to send. Oh, and I should turn on the modulation so you can hear. So notice notice how much faster the text comes through. The lines are printed almost instantly. And there's still a bit of a delay, but much faster. Um, the 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 delay between lines scrolling like the cursor moving down is, is a telex problem, I think. The data is kind of weird, actually. Any other terminal program, you would not see an issue like this, basically. Uh, it's a telex thing. So, I don't know what to say. <laughs> 
because the data you can hear the data is coming through uniformly so and there's my scan disk log if anyone's interested um, and uh, that's basically about it I can try and send the file from here over Go ahead and send uh, telex.doc, which is another file, F10. So now it's sending telex.doc over here, and it's probably going to quit sometime soon. Now this document is blank for a while, so you shouldn't see anything, so. But notice how it's completely frozen over here, it's lagging, so. Both sides sending and receiving on one terminal it just kind of lags them both, but notice uh, that um, that the lights transmit and receive right there, both working. So I fixed that problem. High speed light is on. That's right there on the very left, and one of the terminal programs just quit. See, it's so it's so far behind. Oh no, it's this one that quit. So quit there, but um. And still type. Uh, see how much it's lagging though? It's crazy. Anyway, um, the, other, the only thing I did not try yet, let's quit out of this. Alright, now let's go ahead and dial to the smart modem at the higher speed. And we should. Yeah, it's answering. Now we do, on this mode, when I dial to the modem on high speed, we do get a bit of garbage, but eventually it connects. And I'm going to call that a success. I think, again, this is nothing wrong with the modem, just an incompatibility. So, yep, over on this side we got connect. So this one takes longer for some reason. The modern modem takes longer to connect to it. But uh, data is still coming through normally on both, uh, on both computers. So I can go ahead and... Uh, Ooh, there we go. Alright, so that was that. 